Bacteria eats plastic in breakthrough new discovery. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus labeling Frankenfish. But first, Unilever to pay ex-workers compensation after viral video success. The story was submitted to us on Twitter at Mamik, and they're also one of our great Media Monarchy subscribers and supporters. Eight months after the viral Coda Canal won't, music video by former Ogilvy and Mather ad agency employee turned activist and musician, and the accompanying petition that went along with it, Hindustan Unilever, H-U-L, has announced they're going to compensate their ex-workers in Kodai Canal, India. While the compensation is 15 years delayed, it will help ex-workers poisoned by mercury repay past debts, meet some of their medical expenses, and finally start rebuilding their lives. With this win, the activists and the families involved, second and final demand comes. Unilever must clean up its mercury contamination of Kodai Canal. Now, some background on this story. Hindustan Unilever owns a mercury thermometer factor in South India, which was forced to shut down in 2001. It came out that many of their workers had been exposed to toxic mercury, weren't provided with adequate protective gear, and that 30 ex-workers and 15 kids had died. James Corbin and I covered this story on New World Next Week last August 2015th as part of our year-long coverage of Good News Stories, which became this new Good News Next Week spinoff series beginning in January of this year, 2016. We'll include links to that story, Indian rapper overwhelmed by success of protest song against Unilever from August 2015. And as always, everything we say and play is in the show notes. Our cover story this week comes from our buddy Eric Moshe on Twitter at Vulgarian Scroll, but it's also getting a lot of coverage all around the world, I think, which shows how much people want and need good news this week and next week. Newly discovered bacteria can eat plastic. A team of Japanese scientists has found a species of bacteria that eats the type of plastic found most disposable water bottles, PET. The discovery published Thursday in the journal Science could lead to new methods to manage the more than 50 million tons of this particular type of plastic produced globally each year. The plastic found in water bottles is known as polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, P-E-T. It's also found in polyester clothing, frozen dinner trays, and blister packaging. If you walk down the aisle in Walmart, you're seeing a lot of PET, said Tracy Mincer, who studies plastic in the ocean at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in Massachusetts. Now, hopefully, if you're watching this good news next week, you're not walking down Walmart aisles or using a bunch of plastic as just not buying it in the first place is the best, greatest step you can take in getting involved in this of yourself. As we've said many, many times, the revolution begins in your fridge and in your medicine cabinet. We'll leave the process of how this works, the science, if you will, to read all about it in the show notes, but they've only published the brief introduction, so the PDF research is paywalled, but suffice it to say, this is good news, and they named it Ideonella Sakainsis. Doesn't roll off the tongue. So our last story this week goes from plastic-eating bacteria to genetically engineered salmon, and it is kind of a complicated one, as Oregon passes mandatory GMO labeling bill for transgenic salmon. But let's get some more background on this still-evolving story from the upcoming April-May 2016 issue of Mother Earth News. The article is called The Status of Genetically Modified Salmon. Notes in November 2015, the US FDA announced its approval of the first ever genetically modified animal for human consumption, salmon. Aqua Bounty is making it. A prominent concern is that wild salmon populations could be affected if the lab-engineered fish were to escape into oceans and rivers, as they are almost assuredly to do. The GM salmon are made sterile to prevent reproduction in the event they do escape, although the sterilization isn't 100%. Some scientists point out that even if the GM salmon escaped and couldn't reproduce with wild salmon, the fast-growing large fish could still harm other wild salmon by competing for food and habitat as they grow twice as big, twice as fast. As with other GM foods sold in the United States, it wasn't going to be labeled or anything about it being genetically engineered. As of... 
late January 2016. However, the FDA suddenly changed its ruling. It issued a ban on the salmon until the agency could publish guidelines on how the salmon should be labeled. According to a report in the Washington Post from January 29th, the FDA's action was prompted by language in the federal spending bill recently passed by Congress, which instructed regulators to forbid the sale of genetically engineered salmon until labeling guidelines were established. Now it may be much longer before the salmon actually makes it to U.S. markets. When it does, some grocery stores say they have been listening to the consumer backlash and won't even carry the GM salmon in the first place. We've got that story from the Washington Post, again from January 29th, 2016. And now the latest is the Oregon House has passed a mandatory labeling of genetically modified salmon. House Bill 4122 passed 32 to 27, so not a huge margin. But meanwhile, tied in with this, is Alaska working on their own measures to label GM salmon. As you might imagine, salmon and fishing being an important issue here in the Pacific Northwest, as well as beyond. I guess the sad part about a lot of this is that we had to pass a law to say you have to label it here in Oregon that it's going to be coming out in the first place. But it has been decades coming, and in a lot of ways, this is really going to be toothpaste out of the tube, and we're not really going to be able to put it back in. But again, as we said, vote with your dollar, make your own choices, stock your fridge, stock your medicine cabinet, food, medicine, you know how that works. <laughs> Let's grab some of our hashtag good news next week headlines that are being submitted by you. Big Pharma frightened after new study shows cannabis is a highly effective antidepressant. Meanwhile, our buddy at Real Jack Dallas gave us the story about the bill passing to allow medical marijuana oil in Virginia. And another good news next week miracle. Taxes generated by Colorado's $1 billion pot industry are keeping some towns solvent. And one last tech note on the man who can ride a bike who is paralyzed. Those are some of the ways we're winning and positive developments submitted by you using hashtag good news next week. We would love you to sign up for a monthly donation at MediaMonarchy.com slash support. If you support our independent non-commercial alternative media as Media Monarchy has been around since 2005. This has been Good News Next Week, Episode 10 for March 14th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Media.